All right, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our Facebook Live, um, PEX Canada Facebook Live. And today we're gonna talk about some fall crafts involving leaves. So I hope everyone had a great summer and is um, enjoying the transition back to school, even though I know it's crazy, but I know all of us are glad to be back and everyone's excited to see their learners. And my name is Jesse Collins. I work with Pyramid US, but I'm coming to you guys today to do a live for you guys up in Canada. So I hope this will um, give you guys some great ideas and just some fun activities that you could do in your classroom. So, um, so welcome. So the first thing I wanted to say is that back to school is always a really crazy time. So I hope that both as parents and professionals, you guys will find um, some grace for yourself and just um, take one thing at a time. The other really important thing to remember is that as we come back and we've been away from our students or we're getting new students, we really want to make sure we're spending some time to build that relationship and build that rapport with our learners. And um, we can definitely do that by planning and doing some fun activities with them. So hopefully if you guys have some kids that like to spend time out in nature or like to be outside, um, the, this, these leaf crafts might be something that could help you um, have some fun and build some rapport and relationship with your students and maybe even find some things that are reinforcing or valuable to your learners. So you have a couple options here in regards to collecting leaves. Um, I think our, I live in um, Bozeman, Montana and our leaves are just starting to change here. Um, and so one thing you can do is just go for a hike or kind of go out for a walk and actually um, collect some leaves off of the, the trees. Um, I was, wasn't sure if we were gonna have full leaves changing, but was excited to see that when I went for a little nature walk, I was able to find a variety of leaves that look different, as well as some that were changing color. Um, so I was really able to collect um, a bunch of different shaped leaves, as well as a bunch of different colors. There was yellow and red and brown um, and orange, and so, that was kind of nice and that's a really exciting thing in itself. So um, just the process of going to collect the leaves can be a really nice activity for your students, uh, like to get outside, like to go move, um, and even to be able to comment um, on the different things that they're seeing um, and or even making it fun and kind of going on a scavenger hunt and looking for different types of leaves. So um, that's definitely something you could do one-on-one -on -one with a student, with your child, or as a whole class, you could kind of go out for a walk. So that is definitely one option. Um, if you are not finding leaves um, easily, I did go to our local craft store and for really cheap, I was able to also purchase a bag of fake leaves. I think they are meant for um, decorative purposes. Um, but if you are just not finding leaves out on your hike or don't have the variety that you're looking for, it is an option and they're pretty cheap and you could go to a, some type of craft store and get some fall decorative leaves. So um, there's kind of two options there. Um, really, you have a lot of flexibility when you're doing these projects to um, do anything, do a variety of different things with the leaves. I just want to let you guys know that this video is going along with a lesson plan. The lesson plan is called Leaf Crafts and it looks like this. Um, there's a couple of pictures on there. There's a link to um, the materials, a couple additional resources, and the actual links to the, some of the websites where I found some ideas for some of the leaf crafts. And then on this instructional lesson plan, there are a variety of opportunities for different requests that you could have your, your student make during this lesson, different comments, some receptive directions that you could work on, um, some behavioral tolerance uh, things. If you have a student that's working on saying yes or no, or asking for help or waiting, um, and then as well as some other academic or um, just other learning opportunities like once you make a, a leaf puppet, actually doing some creative play with it, or if you have a kid that's doing math, um, counting the leaves, doing some imitation activities with the, the leaves while you're doing the, the project. So this gives you a bunch of ideas. And then regardless of if your student is a PEX user or not, this lesson and this Facebook Live does also come with a set of pictures. Um, there is leaf, pine cone, acorn outside, paint a couple colors, glitter, popsicle stick, googly eyes, feather, glue, and paper. So by no means all encompassing of everything that you might want to add into this craft, but we'll give you a nice start with a set of pictures. Um, if your kid is a PEX user, these are things you could 
cut out and um, be able to use and put on their textbook. And you just differentiate um, what that instruction looks like. For example, if you're going to have your student ask for some googly eyes and your student was in phase one and you know they kind of like these, you would just put that one single picture out and, ha and use that two-person prompting procedure to have them request that. If you had a student in phase three, um, you could put more than one pictures on here and you could be working in preferred versus non-preferred or preferred versus preferred with correspondence checks. And if you had a student you know, using a set and strip or using attributes, you could um, be expecting a much more specific request. So um, these pictures can be uh, differentiated and used at whatever phase your student's at. Um, if your student is not a PEX user, this is an idea of some pictures that you may want to program into their speech generating device or also some vocabulary that you want to think about that you could be encouraging um, from your speaking students or whatever their modality might be. Um, also, these pictures are great um, for receptive picture directions and things like that. So they can be used for a variety of purposes, um, even if you don't have learners that are um, actively PEX users. Um, and Emily put in the chat box that these lesson plans um, or this lesson plan and these pictures are posted on Facebook and will also be added to the support at the Can um, Canada Support at Home Hub. Okay. Um, okay. So a couple of leaf craft options I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about. The first one I thought was really fun um, was making a monster puppet. And the reason I like this is because that this puppet can be turned. You know, you can actually use this to um, have kids be able to do some creative play with each other and um, you know might be something that actually becomes something fun that your student likes as kind of a reinforcer. Um, so essentially the first thing for this puppet, it's very simple. You would just have the student um, choose the leaf that they want to use. Um, so I'm gonna actually pick two of these leaves. I'm gonna pick a long yellow one um, and a smaller red one. And then you can kind of decide um, what type of decoration, you know, you can use glitter if you're, you're not, if you're sick of glitter, um, you could use paint. Um, I really like these, these are called quick sticks and they're tempera paint, but they come in a stick and they're really not messy and they dry easily. So this is what I'm using today, but you can also have kids using a paintbrush and paint. And, um, you know, you can have your student just however they want kind of paint or decorate on, um, on the leaf. So, um, this is something you could have a request, also something you could just walk away and, and, and let your kid try to do something independently for a little bit. Um, the main feature of this leaf puppet is googly eyes. Um, there are so many different fun types of googly eyes out there. These ones actually glow in the dark. Um, these ones come in a lot of different colors. They come in a large variety of shapes and sizes. So if you do have a student that's working on attributes or being more specific, um, there's tons of opportunity within this little um, one ingredient or I guess material in the activity for students to be questing based on color, based on quantity. Um, this is a leaf puppet monster, so it doesn't have to have two eyes. So kids could ask for five eyes or three eyes. Um, you could also work on big versus small. Um, and, and then with this, you could turn off the lights and actually have them see that it glows in the dark. So that's kind of a, a fun feature. Um, might create some more motivation and interest in the puppet. And then you could also do um, the colors. So um, I'm going to just glue on. So you can just, you could use glue. I think probably regular glue is better than a glue stick to actually make sure it sticks. Um, tacky glue might even be a little bit better. And again, this is something your student could ask you for help with or that, you know, you could just leave them to try to do a little bit independently on their own. Um, and I think the other thing about this project, sometimes we, I know we always try to control the outcome or what it looks like. This is really about the process, about the communication, about the learning. So you don't, you know, you can just, whatever it looks like is what it looks like. And and that's totally okay. So I put three eyes on each of my leaf puppets. Um, just kind of fun how simple, just a little bit of paint. And then you guys can see the googly eyes, googly eyes on there. Um, makes this kind of fun, like a little bit of a monster. Um, the next thing that you have options to use are pipe cleaners or feathers. Um, I'm gonna put one on each of the different. So again, this is something your student could request. They could really secure this in a lot of ways. A pipe cleaner, um, you could work on long and short or different colors. You could cut it. You could also um, have kids ask to 
kind of twirl it up like this so it looks a little bit like a spiral and um, this is something that you could glue on or also something that you could just kind of pop through the leaf um, and secure that way um, so a lot of options there so I'll just secure one pipe cleaner and then I'll put on a little feather And then the last thing that you need is a popsicle stick, um, or you could also use like a, uh, some type of skewer, if you skewer. Um, and essentially you would just, you could glue or tape that on to the leaf, okay? And then you have your little leaf puppet. So um, this is just a fun, simple activity. Your student could make a bunch of these in one sitting. We could get a lot of different requesting in and commenting on different colors and you really can use whatever ingredients or decorations i guess some kind of materials or decorations that you think that might be motivating or reinforcing for your student to make a couple puppets and then this is something that you guys could use for creative play um, or for other things in the classroom so that's the first leaf project and that's the, the monster leaf puppet um, the next thing that you can do is some very simple leaf painting so um, I think this is fairly self-explanatory, but you could definitely have your kids have white paper or a variety of different paper. It can also be fun to put this up on a bulletin board or something for your students and have them have something that's gonna be you know, your fall bulletin board. Um, what, there's a couple different ways that we can paint with the leaves. Um, the first one is that you can, you can literally just paint on the leaf. Um, one really fun thing that I see a lot is like people doing half and half. So, um, you know, they paint one half of the leaf one color and the other half of the leaf another color. Um, so, or the students could just really paint it however they want. So essentially you would put the paint on the leaf and then um, you would push the paint down or push the leaf down, essentially making a press um, to make a print with the paint that you used. And then you could peel it off. And so it's going to kind of look like this. Um, this can, you can just make a bunch of different um, presses like this, and that could be the artwork. You could turn this into a bookmark. This could be a card that they write and send to their parents or their grandparents or someone um, or give to someone else in the school. Um, you could also um, make prints like this. And if you have a kid that likes to draw or you want it to be silly, you could add the googly eyes on or you could also, you know, you could draw some legs and some arms on here. Um, and, you know, maybe a little hat. Um, and you could just decorate this or do some leaf drawings, maybe even make some cartoons or do something like that. And that could be something fun for a student if they like to draw. Uh, maybe even something that if you have a kid that likes this, that could be kind of an independent rec leisure activity for them. So that's the first way that we can paint with leaves. Um, the second way that we can paint with them is that you can um, put the leaf down on the paper. And then essentially what you would do is paint around the edges of the leaf. Um, and so what that's going to do is leave the negative space of the leaf there. Um, and it's gonna be kind of the opposite of what we just did with the print. So essentially I would paint around the edge of the leaf like this and it's going to leave that leaf, um, leave that leaf like that and we could do that in a bunch of different patterns and with different leaves on the paper. So that's just another fun thing that you can do. Um, and then the last thing is that you could literally just have students paint on or decorate the leaf. Um, if you have puffy paint um, that kind of is a little bit stickier, you can do a lot of dots and just decorate different patterns and things. And so that might be something fun as well. Just literally paint on the leaves. Um, they could you know, put them together into a necklace or into a, a garland or something. And that could be the art project as well. So there really is a host of different things that you could do with your learners. Um, with leaves and there's tons of opportunities for um, communication, both uh, expressively as a speaker, having kids request for stuff, having kids comment on stuff that they're seeing, um, 
receptively, having kids follow directions, uh, and even just work on stuff independently. And, um, and even just going into this lesson as a fun activity back to school as a way to build rapport, um, do some preference assessment. And while you're doing this activity scene, does my kid like some of these materials? They love the googly eyes, or they really like feathers, or they like the pipe cleaners. And you may be able to find some things that are motivating and reinforcing with your student while doing something fun. So kind of doing an assessment, but without sitting down and drilling your kid at the, kid, kid at the table with some type of really like rote assessment. So. Um, I think this is a great activity. It could be repeated. Um, if you're again, if your kids like to go out in nature, great opportunity to go out and go for that walk, get some movement, collect those leaves. Um, and the nice thing about that is that we can do this for a while um, until the snow the snow rolls in. And if you end up finding something that your student likes, it could be something that they could do um, independently or as a reward or on their own. So I hope that gave you a couple ideas for some different projects that you could do with the leaves. Um, a couple other things I want to chat about. Um, Hex Canada is going to give away um, some break cards as we're heading back to school. Um, I know that sometimes the transition back can be difficult and our students have to kind of build up their stamina for um, being able to work and, and hang out back at school. So uh, if you guys uh, have watched this video or are tuned in, and you email um, Canada at pex.com and you have until tomorrow, which is um, Tuesday, 921 at noon, um, just an email about what are some things you're doing to make the transition back to school more successful. You have an opportunity to win a set of our pyramid break cards, which are yellow, um, say break on it, and are made of polyvinyl plastic. Um, also, until September 27th, Pex Canada um, after this Facebook Live is offering a, um, a sale on the Picks for Pex uh, download uh, pictures. And that is um, in all capitals, back to school 21. So back to school 21. Um, and that sale is good until September 27th at midnight Eastern time. And that is a sale on the Picks for Pex um, Picks for Pecs pictures. Um, Emily, can you can you tell me? I'm sorry, I, I actually did not write this down. I'm not sure if you could put in the chat box what the sale price is on the um, Picks for Pecs with that sale with the Back to School 21 um, coupon. Thank you so much. And then I also wanted to um, let you guys know that uh, we have a couple trainings coming up. If you're trying to look, you know, get some training, get some CEUs, whatever you might need. Um, this week, actually, on Wednesday, the 22nd, there is a Refresh Your Packs, which is not um, a full-blown Packs Level 1 or Level 2. It's just a, a quick one-day uh, refresher for people that have attended Packs training. Um, there is also, uh, and that's on Central Time, there's also a Transitioning from Packs to Speech Generating Device talk on Wednesday, the 22nd, on Eastern Time. And then we have a level one coming up um, the 27th and 28th on Pacific time. And we also have a nine critical communication skills talk um, coming up on the 29th on central time. So um, also the Picks for Packs CD, the back to school coupon, which is good until the 27th, is gonna be good for 20% off of the Picks for Packs download. So I hope that you guys got some great ideas about the leaves. Um, the last thing I kind of want to end on is that um, I think there's a conceived notion that when we head back to school, we have to get our kids in the desks and just always learning in this kind of rote fashion. And that I want to encourage you guys to think about being really functional with their students, having fun with their learners, and really realizing that there are learning opportunities um, within anything that we're doing in our day. And so even though you know your principal might walk in and see you guys on a nature walk or see you guys having a lot of fun with the leaves and kind of wonder what's going on, we can actually be able to come to the table, you know, with, hey, these are all the different things that we're working on and we're just having a lot of fun while we're doing it. Um, and if we have fun and engage our students in this type of thing, they're not gonna wanna leave or take a break or kind of go away from us. So um, just remember learning can happen anywhere. Um, learning should be fun for all of us and um, hopefully you will get yourself and your kids or your class outside, go on a nature walk,
collect some leaves, um, take a look at these lesson plans and these pictures, and then um, use some of the ideas that we talked about in this Facebook Live to um, do some different leaf painting or to maybe venture into making uh, those monster leaf puppets that we had shown. So um, good luck. If anyone does it, we'd love to hear from you or please feel free to post or share a picture. And thank you guys so much for joining. Reach out to us if you have any questions. And um, also remember, if you are on Facebook, we have a free clinical user support um, page that you can search for. It's called PEX User Support. And that's a great place to share, ask for ideas, or even ask for clarification or questions on anything that you're digging into. So good luck transitioning back to school. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun and have a beautifully decorated classroom with a ton of leaf crafts and enjoy those nature walks and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much.